A really nice example that allows us to practice calculating work with a non-constant force is springs. Okay, so to begin with, um, how does a spring even work? Well, um, springs exert a force. Um, if you compress a spring or you stretch a spring, um, it will exert a force to try to return to its original size. Um, and so there's a um, relationship that tells us how that works. So F equals negative KX is called Hooke's Law, um, named after an old timey English physicist Hooke. Um, and essentially what it tells us is that um, if you move the end of a spring, okay, so if I take a spring that sort of naturally is like this, um, and if you move it um, to the left, let's say, so it becomes compressed like so, um, then x is going to be um, the coordinate of that endpoint. Okay, so here we have a negative x component, um, and the force is going to be to the right because this um, spring is going to want to push back um, towards the um, equilibrium position. Meanwhile, if you take the um, spring and you stretch it out like this, well now x is going to be positive, and the force is going to be back to the left because it will again want to return back to its original position. Okay, so the negative sign has that effect. So we call this a restoring force because it wants to restore um, its original behavior. Um, X is the position of the end of the spring. Um, equilibrium is X equals zero. If you extend it or compress it from there, then that determines what the force is. Um, okay, so this uh, relationship for the force has a really simple um, connection to the position, which will allow us to calculate the work done by the spring. So the work done by the spring force um, is going to be equal to the integral of the force dot ds. Okay. Um, and in this case, we can see that ds is going to be in the x direction, either positive x or negative x, which we can determine based on the starting and ending points. Okay, So um, I'm going to plug into this formula the um, f, which is just negative kx, and I'm going to plug in um, ds is just dx. Okay, So let's assume for now that we're moving um, from the left to the right so that dx is positive. If it was negative, nothing bad would happen. Okay, and we can encode that information by integrating from the starting point x1 to the ending point x2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the integral. So k is just a constant, and when we integrate x, we get 1 half x squared. So I'll get negative 1 half kx squared, and that's evaluated from x1 to x2. Okay, and so if I plug those in, then I'm going to get um, negative 1 half kx2 squared plus 1 half kx1 squared. All right. Um, and so we can actually rearrange that so that the minus is afterwards, which typically we like better. So if I do that, then I get 1 half kx1 squared minus 1 half kx2 squared. Okay, now notice the order here. So this is pretty unusual. Um, we have final, uh, well, normally we have in, uh, final minus initial. Here we have the initial minus the final, right? So this is the backwards order from what you would normally expect. Um, okay, so this gives us the work that is done by a spring. We can just plug it into this formula. If we know k and we know the starting and ending positions, then that's it. Okay, so let's do an example here to see how this works. Okay, so let's say that a spring um, stretches 10 centimeters when a 20 newton block is attached. Okay, so to sketch what that looks like, um, we have a spring like this with some equilibrium position, and then we attach a block which is going to cause it to stretch out by um, 10 centimeters. Okay, so um, if I draw a free body diagram for the block, then I'm going to have a gravitational force on the block by the earth and um, a tension force on the block by the spring. Sometimes people will call the spring force a separate force, um, but I think it's basically just an ordinary tension, so um, I'm just going to call it that. Okay, so I can see, because these are in equilibrium, that the tension and the gravitational force are equal. So if I write that out, T equals G, then what I'm going to get is, um, well, remember, the tension is from a spring, so negative Kx. Um, and I really am just interested in the magnitude, so I'm going to get rid of the negative sign, so that Kx is equal to the gravitational force, which is Mg. Um, and I know mg is um, 20 newtons, because that's given, and I know x is 10 centimeters, because that's given. So if I calculate this out, then k is just going to be um, 20 newtons per 0 0.1 meters, or 200 newtons per meter. Okay, so how do we interpret that number? Well, um, 200 newtons per meter tells me how much force needs to be applied in order to get the spring to stretch one meter. Um, it's usually going to be a really big number, because most springs would require a huge force to stretch that far. Um, you know, if you apply a normal size force, you typically expect to get a centimeter or so of stretch in a spring. So um, that's what this tells us. It's essentially how stretchy, or um, to be more accurate, how not stretchy, so how stiff um, the spring is. Okay, so if it takes more force to um, get a spring to stretch a certain amount, then that means that it is less stretchy or stiffer. Um, so we call this the spring constant. Um, it is the um, quantity that tells us basically everything there is to know about the spring. 
Okay. Um, so now we have a spring constant, and we can calculate, if we want to, how much work is done by the spring. Okay. So all we have to do is plug in the formula. So work equals um, one half k x initial squared minus one half k x final squared, because we already did the integral. So if the initial x was zero, then this term is just going to be zero. Um, the other term is going to be minus one half times 200 newtons per meter times xf, well, that's going to be 0 0.1 meters squared. Okay. So when I plug this in, um, I'm going to get um, negative 1 half of 200 is 100. 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 is um, 1 one hundredth. And so this is going to come up to negative 1 joule. So this spring has done negative 1 joule of work um, in the stretching um, of the spring. That makes sense because the tension forces upwards and the block moved downwards. If we calculated the work done by gravity during that time, then we would get a positive number because gravity is downward and uh, the displacement is downward as well.